It's been a while since we've heard Chelsea Dagger at the end of a Hawks game. It's been the same amount of time since we've won a game. So, overall, feeling pretty good about this. Yeah. Well, boom! Is this we are in so weak. Any Hello, welcome to Hawks Recap Game 29 in the books and the Hawks win against the Buffalo Sabres in overtime by a score of 3-2. Their first win in the last six games feels pretty darn good. Speaking of first win in a while, there was a lot of firsts tonight. I mean, we got our first snow that's stuck on the ground, at least where I live, so that's kind of why I'm wearing this. I gotta go shovel after this video here. Um, Henestrosa getting his first NHL action of the season. Carroll got sent down if you did not hear the news. He cleared waivers, so he is in Rockford officially now. But Henestrosa slots in in this game in place of Hartman, who's had a couple of dumb penalties as of late. Had the knee on knee against Ovi in the last game. Not very good. A lot of people kind of think that Panic should be the one sitting. I don't really disagree. But we'll see in the coming days how this all kind of shakes up and, you know, what the rotations might look like. I mean, this is only one game. There's still plenty of time for Panic to sit out in place of Hinostroza and Hartman. We'll just have to wait and see on that front, though. I was actually kind of surprised Hinostroza even played this game. I figured probably just get him up here watch a game from the press box and then have him practice a little bit with the team just to get kind of acclimated with his potential line mates and stuff before a game and then maybe play on Sunday the next game against the Coyotes. But he slotted right in there and did fairly decently. He had four shots on goal in this game. Crawford also got his first start in about a week since he was placed on IR. He was only out for a week, thankfully, but getting his first start tonight and not only getting his first start, but playing as well as he was prior to the injury, so that was great to see. Now the Hawks starting a three-game homestand against three bottom-tier teams in the league. These are games the Hawks need to win, starting with this one against the Sabres. And, <laughs> I mean, the Hawks just have had some terrible luck in terms of playing decently but not coming out on top on the scoreboard, and this kind of looked to be the same type of dumb deal in this game, the Blackhawks out shooting the Sabres 13 to five in this first period. But as per tradition, the Sabres are the ones that get on the board first. They get a power play very, very late in the first period and they capitalize on it. Eichel with the pass to Pommenville right in the slot area and Pommenville redirects that pass up and over Crawford into the back of net. Sabres take the 1-0 lead late in the first period and into intermission type of goal that really just can suck the momentum out of the opposing team. The Hawks got to find a way to come back and just forget about that. Blackhawks do end up coming out playing just as well as they did in the first period in that second period and it pays off for them on the scoreboard finally. They get a power play eight and a half minutes into the second period and Debrinkat ties this game up with a nice little short side wrist shot with Leonard being screened in front, put someone in front of the net. Like I always say, good things are going to happen, and it happens here. Both teams with a power play goal. This game is tied up halfway through this game. Unfortunately, about two and a half minutes after that, the Sabres retake the lead. Hawks with a little bit of a defensive breakdown in their own end. Sabres with the puck below the goal line after a nice little four-check board battle win. They get it out to Opozo, who is a little bit late getting into the zone and therefore is pretty wide open. He unleashes a shot that gets by Crawford. And I don't want to take anything away from Opozo here because it was a great shot, but it looks like it may have hit off Forsling's stick, which then redirected different angle past Crawford. No real evidence, or you can't really say that Crawford makes that initial save, but it's kind of an unfortunate break, I think. And, you know, who knows? Maybe Crawford makes that initial save, but... Like I said, I don't want to take anything away from Pozo. A goal is a goal, and those kind of things just happen. The Hawks would come really, really close to tying this game up right before the second intermission when Jonathan Taze finds Panic in the high slot, who rips a one-timer low that Leonard somehow makes a toe save on, sliding right to left. And we can, I mean, we can complain about Panic all we want. So far this season, he hasn't really lived up to what we need him to do. He hasn't scored in a long time. 
But if we think about and look back on a lot of these past games recently, he's had a lot of great chances that either the goalie has made a huge save on or he's hit the post. He's been really, really close to scoring. He just hasn't been able to get it done. And you just got to kind of feel bad for him because you never know if one of these goes in, confidence boost goes up and he may start playing better. And we might not even be talking about why he's not sitting instead of, you know, Hartman, you know, when Henestrosa gets put into the lineup. So it, you kind of have to feel for him a little bit. So the Sabres are up 2-1 to one for the longest time. Third period clock just keeps winding down and it's not going to be another one of these games. It can't be. We need this victory. It's just, oh, it's so frustrating. And then four minutes left, Seabrook takes a penalty and now the Hawks are on the penalty kill. You got to be kidding me. The Hawks out shooting the Sabres by a ratio of 2-1 to one in this game, but... With the penalty kill and time running out, it just doesn't look like it's going to happen once again for the Hawks. Just, ah, why does this keep happening? But then Schmaltz on the PK just makes a fantastic individual effort, taking the puck into the zone. He could have easily just chipped it in and relinquished possession. He could have easily just gone and had a board battle and then lost the puck just to waste some time. But the Hawks are down, and he just waits for some help to come just keeps control of the puck somehow just kind of fumbles it around but it's, the puck stays on his stick the sabers actually get six skaters on the ice don't get called for the too many men so it's like four on six but the puck finds forsling and forsling makes a shot pass to wingles right in the slot and wingles tips it in past leonard oh my god this is the type of play that can bring a season back from the dead Hawks tie this game up with a shorthanded goal, 2-2. Two to two. The Hawks would kill off the rest of that penalty, and then with 20 seconds left, had another gorgeous chance. Sharp, all alone, open net, just a rebound, scramble in front, puts the puck on his back and slides it in behind Leonard, but it hits the far post. It stays out, and we're going into overtime. So it's overtime, three on three. The Hawks are guaranteed one point, but we need two points in this game. Debrinkat is forced to be a defender in this situation with Eichel rushing down the side. Debrinkat, if I have to remind you, is not a defenseman, and Eichel is one of the better forwards in the league. He gets by Debrinkat and gets hauled down by the Cat, and so Eichel gets a penalty shot. But we've got Crawford back in net, and Crawford says, no way, Jose. Eichel tries going five hole, doesn't get it, and the game continues on. The Hawks have possession in the offensive zone, but clock is winding down. It looks like this game might be headed for the shootout, but Forsling with the puck, and he does his best. Duncan Keith impression. I said this last year. I've said it this year. I'll say it again. I'll keep saying it. Gustav Forsling, this kid can be something very, very special. He can be a very special player in the future. He has that potential, and he's showing it in bursts, and he had a great game in this one. He does his best Duncan Keith impression here, who was not a bad player to be compared with, especially when you're talking about special players. He kind of fakes, goes back the other way, and right as Leonard is trying to get around his own player's screen in front, Forsling Shoots the puck from the point, wrist shot, it goes five hole. Leonard never even sees it until it's already past him. And the Hawks win this game three to two with five seconds left in overtime. Take the two points. Oh, relief. Relief. Chelsea Dagger plays, and all is right again in this world. The Hawks outshot the Sabres 51 to 28 in this game. And the Sabres also blocked 31 additional shots. That's 82 plus shot attempts for the Blackhawks. And they almost lost this game. That is unreal. It's absolutely ridiculous. I don't know. I don't understand why this is even a thing right now. This keeps happening. The Hawks are playing decent hockey. They just don't seem to get... The support on the scoreboard, it's unreal. 
this game, I mean, oh my god. <laughs> Those numbers are just absolutely ridiculous. The Hawks start off their three-game homestand on the right track with two points. Up next is the Coyotes, a team who is still a bottom tier team in this league, but playing better as of lately. Still a team we should get two points from. Let me know what you think. Who do you think is going to be sitting in this lineup now that Hinnestros is up? Do you think Panic will sit? Do you think Hartman will sit again? Do you think maybe Sharp will sit? Maybe Hinnis Rosa will sit. Also, with Franzen being injured and considered day-to-day, -day, if he can't go on Sunday against the Coyotes, who takes his place? Kempney Osterley. Let me know in the comments section below. I want to hear your thoughts on that. Thanks for watching this episode of Hawks Recap. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the result in this game. Let me know your thoughts on that lineup, the game, and the team's performance down in the comments section below. Like, share, subscribe. Do those things if you so choose to. Two big mitten thumbs up for that. For sure, kids, if you are watching, don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Mittens are freaking awesome. They are warm, and you can act like a crab or a lobster. It's pretty cool. So, with that said, I got to go shovel so stay safe, make good decisions, and I will see you next time.